Tell me about checklist usage and what you know, what you do, what you've seen, and what's important about it. First of all, it's very important to use a checklist uh, for everything, especially for going through uh, doing your pre-inspection. Uh, you could miss something without checking your checklist that could be broken or or something that could you know make the, uh, the helicopter unworthy. So uh, using the checklist, and sometimes it gets redundant when you continue to use the checklist from front to back. So after a while, you, you might want to switch it up, start it in the middle, go to one side, and then go back and start to the other side, start it in reverse. Just change it up a little bit to keep you, keep you going and keep everything uh, fresh and different, you know. That's for, like, doing an inspection. And then you got the startup and shutdown, which is important, too, because you might skip a, a step in that. And... Um, might make damage to the helicopter or damage to the engine or some sort. So always use your checklist. They're there. That's why they're there. There's no need not to use them. They're there. Use them. Okay. Be honest. How many times have you skipped the checklist on a, on a pre-flight, number one? Uh, probably. I don't think I've ever had. That's the first thing I do is go in and grab it. All right. Good boy. Because they're right next to each other. <laughs> How many times have you done a startup without the checklist? Never. I've always, I always grab it. Yeah, I always, I always grab it. Just to have it. I mean, I know it, that especially the the shutdown. But you always have it in your hand. Okay. okay. You always go through How, it. How many pilots have you flown with in helicopters specifically that you know don't use it at all or skip it part of the time or What's your experience with other pilots that you've seen, or airplanes too? What's your experience? Well, in our situation, when at our airport, um, the fuel dock is farther away, and they don't have any fuel tanks or anything to bring it the uh, fuel to the helicopter or that where the uh, the hangar is. Right. So after the lesson, we usually go over, shut it down, get fuel. And then at that point, we would start it back up and just tax it back around to the hangar. So that's when it gets really lax. Um, we just start it up. You know, you don't do any of your checks or anything, and you just taxi back. And I right. see people in that situation just getting it back, you know. Right. Do you think that's appropriate? Probably not. I mean, anything could happen. Yeah. I mean, even though you're five, ten feet off the ground and you're you're just taxiing, but um, still something could happen. Okay. And I think gonna... that's kind of like get back itis, you know, like just get it back. It's no big deal. You know, you're not going to be up high and you're just taxiing it. My take on this is I'm amazed at the amount of people that don't use them, skip them. Have I ever skipped a checklist? Yes, I have. Have I ever skipped it on a pre-flight? Yep. Have I ever skipped it on a startup? Yep. Do I do it in general? No. You know, I've had those times where I've gotten laxed and then gotten bit by it because I didn't do it properly and I tried skipping. And I've done it in a simple aircraft and I've done it in the more complex aircraft. You know, I was very by the book for the long for a long time. And then, you know, you get... 500 hours, 1,000 hours in a certain aircraft, and yeah, it's redundant. And I can tell you that when you decide to do it without the checklist, it can be one simple switch as a you know, boost pump. And even though the light's on, you don't see the lights on. You did a pre-takeoff check, and you somehow you didn't catch that that boost pump was not on. Every time I've really tried to do it, I've forgotten something. I've never had anything bad happen. I will forget something almost every single time. So I kind of, I've been through the cycle of being really good. And then I've played the game of getting a little laxed. And then I've learned my lessons over doing stupid stuff. And now I'm back to use the checklist every single time. And in the real world, in the training world, I see people do it all the time. And I'll give you the example in the EMS world, you know, professional pilots. They told us. Guys, when you go back to the, your base, when you're out pre-flight in the helicopter, 
there will be a time where someone from our company will be in the parking lot or they'll be in the office if you're inside a hangar. At some point, you will be observed pre-flighting the aircraft. And if you do not have your checklist in your hand, you will be told to go home. And they said, we don't care when you're climbing up on the on the top to get up and check the rotor head. That checklist needs to be in your hand. When you fall down to the ground, you better be holding that checklist. Are you struggling with all the information there is to know to become a helicopter pilot? Discover the number one helicopter training system on the web. Now you can attend helicopter online ground school from the comfort of your own home at your own pace, 24 hours a day. Experienced, certified, and passionate. Let Captain Keller guide your online instruction to help you succeed in obtaining your helicopter pilot's license. Only at Helicopter Online Ground School.